All right. Yes, we've got part two of this. This has actually been a... Um, oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, this has actually been a great story. Hold on. Um, yeah, this has actually been great so far. I have really enjoyed listening to this. A cra it is a crazy story. Just all of it, from how he's moving. I love that he's armed. Such a, that's so American. Like, it, that is like, to Americans, I, that's maybe not as impressive, but to, to us it is, because, yeah. You even look at a gun in our country and you are going to prison. But, yeah. Um, we were there when Nixon met Elvis, so, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Office, to me, reading it, talking it over with my hours ast in these astounded when, staff. Did you expect to hear from the White House? Listen, Elvis went to a meeting, which I, he had ne I'd never seen him in a meeting either. And he had left me a phone number and said, you stay here and wait for the White House call. <laughs> I read a lot of Howard Hughes books where he left people in hotels for like a year. <laughs> yeah. He ended up staying there himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for the same guy. It's so, a... and I didn't want to hurt Elvis's feelings and tell him we weren't going to get a call. So yeah. that's how that So you we were surprised when, when, when this Mr. Crow called. I was surprised. And uh, after Bud called, I never underestimated my friend's power again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> since, you, since you mentioned Dwight Chapin, let's take a look at the memo yes, that he yeah. sent to, to Bob, Haldeman. Bob Haldeman, the president's chief of staff. <laughs> this is the memo suggesting, uh, offering the option that the president meet Elvis Presley. The, the most interesting part of the memo is page two. Let's go to page two. Do you see the writing? You must be kidding. <laughs> 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 and and uh, that's that's H. That means he actually said go ahead, and that's what led to. That's uh, right. And, and where he said that he he wanted the president to start meeting young people, and let's begin with Elvis Presley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with the most famous man yeah. on the planet. So let's do that. And then Bob wrote, "You must be kidding!" But you see his big H there, yeah, approving, approving the meeting. So so we had a a go ahead. But now this came a little bit after. I had had this audition meeting with Jerry and Sonny West. And one thing you might tell us a little bit is when did Sonny West join the mini entourage that, that came? That well, came when, uh, when I had made the deal with Elvis to have uh, security from Memphis meet us where I could get back to uh, California, uh, when I called Elvis, who was at uh, Findlater's office, uh, to tell him that you wanted to meet about the meeting with the president. Um, Elvis said, and, and this is the type of friend he was. I mean, he's going to go, in his mind, to the White House, who was the executive offices. And you know, he knew if he got that meeting, he knew he was, you know, nobody says no to Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I learned that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, what oh, happened oh. is, he said, Jerry, uh, Go outside in front of the hotel, and I will swing by and pick you up on the way. And that's, you know, he included his friends and everything. As I was waiting and I saw the limousine coming, I saw Sonny getting out of a taxi. And I said, Sonny, put your luggage with the bellman. We're going, we're going to the White House. So that's how that's how Sunny got involved. So, so how did the audition go? Well, the audition went splendidly. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't know until I got a call from the Northwest Gate. This is now the old executive office building from the guard. Right. And I still did not know you guys were for real. Uh, and, and I thought, well, it's going to be an impersonator. You still don't know. I still don't know. <laughs> that's right. That's right. None of us are for real. Ooh. Anyway, so this guard said, Mr. Krug, there's somebody here who looks surprisingly like uh, Elvis Presley. Uh, <laughs> he, he, and he's, he's wearing an interesting outfit. Um, and they were tart, tight-fitting purple velvet pants and yeah. a silk shirt open yeah. to the navel with a gold chain. And um, what do you want me to do with him, sir? And I said, well, bring him on down to, to the office. And I, they brought him on down. It wasn't until they walked into my office that I realized, 
Oh my goodness, this is Elvis Presley. <laughs> oh, my secretary's, oh, Sandra Green. Oh, it is, it is Elvis Presley. And then you all came in, and I will tell you, that was one of the most lovely half hours that I've had uh, talking to you all and hearing Elvis talk from the heart about what his country meant to him. Uh, he sort of paraphrased the letter. Yeah, I've gotten yeah. a lot from my country. Yes. I want to give it back. I want to help the country out. Uh, I can go into any group of people and be accepted by yes. anyone. Yes. Uh, and he had put in the letter that he would like to be made a uh, federal agent at large. <laughs> we don't have federal agents at large. <laughs> we got Secret Service agents, FBI. We got all kinds of agents, but not agents at large. Um, but that didn't seem to me to be a showstopper. But I should also, <laughs> full disclosure requires me to tell, I was the biggest Elvis fan in the 1950s. Never went on a date without him. You know, I mean, that yeah. would say. So here he is. <laughs> in my, yeah, he's in my <laughs> office with you guys. And, and I'm trying to justify, how do I yeah, set this meeting up with the president? Because you have to write a script of talking points. Yeah. This was sort of a futile effort. But I mean, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm talking to him, thinking about it. What can I say? And, and I think you only stayed about a half an hour, and then I asked you to go back to the hotel. Right. And I said, we'll see if we can get the approvals. And this memo uh, was sent in right after I'd had that audition. Dwight had already uh, drafted up a lot of the content and the reasoning behind it by, by saying he's the visionary for this whole thing. So I called him over and I said, this meeting has got to take place. The president has never met anyone quite like Elvis Presley. Elvis hasn't met anyone quite like the president. And what I'm really saying is, and I want to be in this meeting. And, I, I, uh, and, and, and here's the memo that puts you in the meeting. Yes. That's good. You yeah. see that? Participants, Elvis Presley, Bud Crow. Yeah, I wrote that. Does yeah. it, does yeah. it, does <laughs> it actually doesn't say Richard Nixon. No, no. no. It's, uh, <laughs> he's a given. He's like the desk. No, no, I, said, no I, I wanted to make sure that I would get in this meeting. <laughs> and, and, and Dwight really wanted to set it up yeah. that way. What's amazing, you think that's the power of Elvis, is that he makes even government, not just government people, but like legit people in the White House um, swoon kind of thing. Oh, I want to be like, you think this man must have met some of the most powerful people ever in the job he was doing, or at least seen him, but still, Elvis is like, he wanted to be there when Elvis was there. It's, just, it's amazing, because cause I know like the Beatles have that same um, level of fame, but when Elvis is the guy that made the Beatles turn into fanboys, do you know what I mean? It just, yeah, the power of Elvis is, well, what he had. So he's amazing. So uh, I, I drafted this up and put some ideas about how Elvis could help us on the drug program because we wanted some support from the entertainment industry. Uh, we'd had a number of other entertainers come back, Art Linkletter mm -hmm, and others, mm -hmm. to help us out because uh, the, the government was inherently non-credible and what it would say about the risks and the dangers of drugs. So we thought this, this would be a helpful thing to do. So and also I think we wanted him to participate in writing a musical about getting high on life rather than yeah, high yeah. on drugs. <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't at my, the muse wasn't probably firing in all cylinders, <laughs> at, at that, but trying to find ways to justify it. So anyway, I, I sent this over and then got the word back from, from Dwight that the, the meeting was on, uh, that Haldeman had approved it. And, now, understand that this is all going over a two- or three-hour period, and we've got a lot of people working hard to see if we can pull this thing off. Right, right. And so after I got the word back from, from Dwight that Bob had approved it, uh, the chief of staff, and I think it's probably true today, approves all people that go into the Oval Office or he might delegate it to somebody. I called you back at the hotel, mm -hmm. and I said, the meeting is on. Uh, come on back over here. We're going to have the session around 11.45. There was a, about an hour period of time when different guests could come in, and we had reserved, I think, about five minutes. It was going to be a drop-by, something like You all yeah, heard that yes. term of drop-by, they yeah. take pictures and the rest. Well, um, they came back over, and I got a call from the Secret Service, uh, the head of the Secret Service. And now remember what Jerry said about taking down this little thing from the wall <laughs> uh, and somehow bringing that across the country. Um, the head of the Secret Service detail said, but we've got a little problem here. Uh, I said, what's that? He said, well, Elvis has brought a gun uh, with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very nice gun. Uh, <laughs> it's got battles of World War II engraved in the barrel, and there are bullets in the display case. 
Uh, he said, Bud, you know that no guns in the Oval Office is standard policy around here. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I, I realize that. And, um, and so I figured, God, I wish he told me about that. And in his letter, at the bottom of the letter, he said, I have a gift for you, which you, you can, I can give you now, or you can, and I can give it to you later. So when, when you can receive it. But it would have yeah. been nice to know that he had a gun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, uh, yeah. but, well, why don't we, let's look at the gun. No, no, a, we have a picture of the gun. We have a gift. Okay. Uh, oh, he has to go. There, there it is. Isn't uh, that beautiful? But you can see why the Secret Service would wonder. You know, I, he's, yeah. he's, he's going to go in. He's going to take it out. But, of but the here's how responsible he was about the guns. When we were driving up uh, to the white, that drive that's to me was to the White House, he took all of his guns off and put them on the floorboard of the car. <laughs> that's very except the, except <laughs> this gift, you know, World War II in a, in a case. There's an interesting thing, though. I don't know if you guys know. Speaking of the badge, the badge he was referring to, he really, he, he called it a different thing, but he knew the badge that he wanted. A year before, Elvis was, uh, for years, he collected badges, but not, but not honorary, real badges. And he went to rifle ranges, and we had the right to carry concealed weapons. One night, a private detective who had worked with Elvis on a couple of things set up a one of the few dinners we ever went to at a famous restaurant in Beverly Hills at Chasen's. He wanted him to meet this guy who, who, who worked at Disney. His name was Paul Fries, and he did voices like Bo Winkle and stuff. And I'm thinking, why would Elvis want to meet this Disney voice character? And we go up to a private room, we have dinner, and O'Grady, the private detective, tells Paul Fries, Show Elvis your badge. Paul reluctantly showed him his Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous, Dangerous Drugs. Drugs. And Elvis, from that moment on, set out to get that badge. <laughs> well, yeah. now, I, now, that would have been helpful knowledge uh, for me. Well, 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 but, uh, <laughs> but that badge was the reason he met with Findlater. Exactly. Yes. So he who, tr who turned him down. Who turned, turned him down. down. Yeah. So the first person he meets... Turns them down. Turns it, so the you know, the, if, the head if you, of the bureau. If you can't get it, if you can't get it from from an agency head, you go to the president. Well, you go to the yeah, <laughs> you, you, you go right up the chain. Yeah. And, I, and I'm on that route to the top of the chain. So anyway, I got the the I went across West Executive Drive and went over and I, I had to I took the uh, the the gun yes with the Secret Service on behalf of the president. And by the way, this gun is a featured exhibit. In your Belinda at the Nixon Library. You can go see this gun out yes. there now. It's a, it's a great gun. I didn't bring it with me. On yeah, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's right. That, that's, that's why. <laughs> so, anyway, um, we took the gun, got past that, and um, then we're waiting there in the Roosevelt Room for the word from the Secret Service to go in. And he comes out and he says, Mr. Krogh, uh, the president is ready now. So, we walked into the Oval Office and uh, uh, maybe you have the, you might well, go back. Let's go to the first, first Oval the Office. first Oval Office picture. Because he doesn't just he doesn't just have the gun. No, he, he has his photograph. See, I, I I wasn't really tumbling to the fact that he has a lot of photographs in his left hand, and he's got badges. And the president is shaking hands with him, and nice to see you. I mean, just to get Elvis over to the desk it took a little effort because he <laughs> walked in the door and he looked at the eagles engraved in the ceiling and eagles engraved in the carpets and the floor. And I knew it sort of overwhelmed him. Yeah. I'm a poor boy from Tupelo, Mississippi, and I'm here in the Oval Office of the President of the United States. So I sort of escorted him. You know, I put my hand on his back and moved him over to, uh, to the desk. And you can see here that he's wearing his cool glasses and his cape and his shirt. Nobody was ever dressed quite that way in the, in the <laughs> Oval Office. And the President had never seen anyone quite like that, that either. And there's, they're shaking hands, and Ollie Atkins, who is the White House photographer, did a phenomenal job of, with these photographs. And maybe what we can do is... Does the president look like he's kind of afraid to shake hands? Well, he, right he, he's... That's, um, sorry to keep pausing it, but yeah, in the Beatles anthology, this comes up. But they say it in terms of there isn't a picture of when Elvis met the Beatles. And as I, it was such a private, secret meeting between the Beatles and Elvis that um, there's no record of it. There's no picture. There's no picture evidence of the Beatles and Elvis meeting, which you think there would be. Um, and, that, and yeah, in the anthology, they say that. They're like, there's a picture of Elvis meeting the president, 
but there's no picture of Elvis and the Beatles meeting. And another little fun fact about that, John Lennon, well, all the other band members said John Lennon lied about jamming with him. And they said that didn't happen. They didn't jam with him. But anyway, let's go. He's not quite sure who, who he is, but... Uh, <laughs> well, now, he's, the next, let's look at the next photograph where Elvis is showing him the photograph. This, is, this in a little book I wrote about a while back was called Show and Tell. He is showing the president pictures of Lisa Marie, I yes. think, uh, Priscilla, <laughs> and some of his badges from yes. all these different uh, departments around the country. And the president says, oh, that, that's it's beautiful and very nice. And <laughs> he's looking over at me. And I said, right, they are nice pictures. Now, was and this nice. part of the play-by-play -play that you designed Well, actually, I, I'm, I'm really going to resign as a script writer because not one thing that I put in my talking points <laughs> were actually said during the meeting. Yeah. So, so, but um, anyway, I'm standing off to the right a little bit watching this. Uh, how many of you have seen the film Forrest Gump? Okay, a lot of you and probably a lot of people watching in C-SPAN. Uh, remember that line in Forrest Gump where he's sitting on the park bench and he said, my mama told me that life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Well, this was my box of chocolates moment, my Forrest Gump experience. Shall we, shall we look at Forrest Gump? Let's take a look at Forrest Gump, please. There, there you are. There is Forrest. There. <laughs> so, 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 just like him? That's, that's there Forrest. There you are, Forrest. That's right. Well, they, they, they make a remake of that. It's not Tom Hanks. No, that, it's Bud Krogh as Forrest Gump. Bud Krogh. There we are. You see all this? He's showing cufflinks that the vice president <laughs> President, beautiful cufflinks, really a... nice cufflinks there. And I'm looking, yeah, those are, those, those are really nice, this... Mr. President. <laughs> so then after we are going through um, show and tell like this and cufflinks, and I'm having a good time, and I actually, you can see in my left hand, I've got this pad because you take notes so that you can write the memoranda of the meeting afterwards. They start talking about things that Elvis has been studying. And he had put this in his letter, too, yes. that I made a, a study of communist brainwashing. President, you have? Uh, <laughs> and uh, he said, yes, and I have really been getting into that. And he said, OK. Uh, and then he said something about the Beatles that wasn't that flattering. Uh, he said, you know, the Beatles came over here, uh, made a lot of money, and said some anti-American stuff. And President, Beatles, the Beatles have done that? And, and I didn't say, I'll get right on it, Mr. President. I'll find out what they're doing. You know, it's just, and then he talked about how difficult it was yeah. to play Las Vegas. And the president said, yes, I understand. That's a, that's a hard, hard gig to do out there. And I go, how does he know that? It's just a, <laughs> uh, so this stuff is going back and forth. And, and I'm just watching this amazing conversation unfold. And then, as Jerry has set this up so perfectly, the Elvis turns to the president. And he said, Mr. President, can you get me a badge from the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs? <laughs> Now, I ask this audience, if you don't know the answer to that question, what is the right answer as the staff person responsible for the meeting? What should I have said? Anybody help me here? Oh, wait a minute. No, don't. No, yeah. I'll look into it. Let me check it out. Let me find out if it's legal. You know, I mean, a lot of things that you want to find out in advance. What do you think I said? Mr. President, if you want to get him a badge, we can get him one. OK. Exactly. So, and so at that point, uh, <laughs> the president said, get him a badge. I want him to have one. Elvis is overcome. And he steps forward, and he grabs the president. <laughs> and he hugs him, which wasn't the norm in that White House. You know, there is, you know it's just, uh, And I'm watching this probably the last meeting. They're going to let me run around this place. You know, I'm, I'm out of here. And then after that, uh, he turned to the president. And this shows what Jerry was talking about in terms of Elvis's loyalty to his friends. And he turned to the president and said, Mr. President, do you have time to meet my friends? It would mean a great deal to them. And the president looks at me and said, Bud, do, do we have time for that? I mean, it's a, I mean, already we are far beyond anything anybody thought about this meeting. And I said, oh, yes, sir, we do. He said, fine. So I went out, and I think I brought you guys back in. You did. You, uh, you there was a phone call that the aide that stayed with us well, you took Elvis in first, uh, and he was explaining to Sonny and I how, you know, um, it, it was even above the president. It was a Secret Service thing, and, and the phone rang, and he, he got the call. The, the president yeah. wants to meet Mr. Presley's friends. Now, I have to interject one thing. Elvis did like the Beatles. Oh, good. Now, this is and, helpful. And, BBC and, will want to know this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did. Elvis, if you look 
underlying, was trying in his mind to say everything to President Nixon <laughs> because the government was after John at the time and the sleep in and all that kind of stuff. He was trying, and he brilliantly did, get the president to, re he, he was relating to the president on his level, he saw. That's why. He liked, he recorded three of their records. <laughs> yeah, but he loved the Beatles. That's right. He loved the Beatles. Okay. Yes. So, so anyway, then you might go on to the okay, next. Let's go to the picture. Ne with next the, picture. With, uh, when the friends come in. And the friends come yeah. in. Uh, <laughs> there they are. There's your cool leather it's jacket. Very nice Isn't jacket. that cool? Which one and, am and, I? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're next to Elvis right, right there between right. Sonny. And Sonny is, is wearing, you know, his dashing black tie suit and shirt. And he was just out at the library, wasn't he, Sonny West, just mm -hmm. about two or three months ago. Oh, yes. And you've been yeah. invited back. I found that today. Oh, so really? want you to come back. So here they're all in there come talking to each me. other. And <laughs> we should do it. And the president's got his hands on his hips. And he said, you got a couple of big ones here, Elvis. <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey, you know, when, when, we, when we walked in, and Tim, if I could talk about the first impression. I was, I was a history major. And I was in my... My last semester, I was going to be practice teaching. I was the one student who got to do that. And when you took us down to the Oval Room, if you remember, it wasn't a staff guy or anybody opened the door. It was Elvis. And so pictures are flat, right? And all the stuff I had seen at the White House, when Elvis opened the door and said, come on, you know, I looked down, and there was the president at his desk at that yeah. point. Yeah. And I realized the oval room was oval. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was my first. Wow. And Elvis thought I was afraid, which I was intimidated. And he kind of pushed me in. As, and Sonny comes in. And as we're going over, uh, the president kind of did a little thing like that on my shoulder. Yeah, he, he whacked and, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and goes, uh, Look like some football players. Yeah. It wasn't not a technical assault. It was no, just no. Little, you know, just a little punch. But, but the, I, then I realized there was a human side of President Nixon. Right. <laughs> well, and, and what was so fun about this part of it, too, is that after the president has met with some guests, uh, he often likes, when the meeting's coming to an end, he wants to give gifts uh, to the people that have been there. Now, let's say that you've won the award for best cow for the 4-H club in <laughs> King County, Washington, and you come to the Oval Office, right, right. the president will go in his bottom drawer and give you a golf ball. Here's your ball. And it's no, <laughs> it's, there's no connection between ball, cow, 4-H, here's your ball. Uh, but it's, it's nice, and, and it's cheap. <laughs> now, this is one of the most abiding memories that I have of this entire episode. The president went behind his desk, and he opens the bottom left-hand drawer. I wonder if you could go back to a picture with a desk. Yeah. Uh, if, Can we go uh, back to the yeah, Okay, see the telephone in, uh, what is it, on your left side. The bottom drawer on that side of the desk is where he had the gifts. And they're arranged by golf balls through cufflinks to bracelets to pins. Yeah. And I don't know if it's an ascending order of value from the cheapest to the 16-karat gold that you give to the big hitters. Right. Uh -huh. uh, but anyway, he's behind his desk, starting to reach down. Now, Elvis didn't get to be the king of rock by not knowing where the gold is. So <laughs> he went behind the desk with the president. <laughs> the KGB can't do this, you know, but Elvis Presley is diving into the president's <laughs> drawer, and the president's looking at me, he's cleaning me out. He's going back in. <laughs> now, I mean, you saw this I was whole thing, and remember yeah. what he said. Remember, Mr. President, they have and wives, wives and sweethearts. Yeah. <laughs> And Elvis wasn't clear about what he was saying there. But I don't remember the sweetheart, but maybe, maybe, the wise. maybe it was just wise. <laughs> and so out come all these presents. This is four days before Christmas. They did all their Christmas shopping in the president's yeah. drawer. <laughs> you know? And I'm watching this. Oh, there's a florist over there. Well, it looks pretty good to me. And so, so anyway, what did you get, by the way? I always wondered what... I uh, got, I got a, a set of cufflinks. And then when Elvis said, you know, they have wives, uh, there was a, a, a gold president... Uh, pennant for my wife. Yeah, and, and I think those were the 16 karat gold ones that were towards because Elvis could immediately, I mean, he could, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get those out there for yeah, the yeah. So anyway, um, they, they, you all left pretty laden down. You know, this was, yeah. this was a gift period. And we walked across the, oh, this is a good picture to show you going across the Oval Office. We went out just to the right of that little cruel work, which is the symbol of the seal of the President of the United States that Julie, the President's daughter, had, had uh, done for him during the campaign and gave it to him when Nixon went over the top. 
uh, that night mm -hmm. when he was elected. And it was just to the right of that. You can see that door. And then we went oh, down right. to lunch in the, um, in the mess. Now, the White House mess is a place that has seen many famous people, uh, movie stars, uh, famous senators, even heads of state would like to be able to eat there. But when I walked in to the White House mess with Jerry and Sonny West and Elvis Presley in his great outfit, people, the jaws just dropped. <laughs> and of course, I went over. Uh, did you hold his chair or did Sonny hold it? I did. I, 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 I was so proud of him at that point. He done I didn't usually pull out a chair for Elvis. Yeah. But, you know, and it, remember you got to the table, we didn't have a, it was in the center of the- Yeah, the center of the, of the place. Yeah. That's right. And I saw Elvis kind of, I just, I kind of pulled out the chair and, you know, and he, he sat down sat there. Down. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, do you remember what you ate? God, no. I don't either. <laughs> Always no. a cheeseburger. Well, I've been up almost three days now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had a great lunch uh, together. And then afterwards, now, you have to understand, halfway through this meeting, the president and Elvis concluded that it ought to be kept secret. Yeah. <laughs> because they weren't sure that their respective constituencies right. would understand why we were all yeah. together, you see. <laughs> and so the Elvis was saying, well, you know, it's, uh, I think we need to keep this confidential. And the president said, good idea. Yes, that's a good idea. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Well, um, after lunch, uh, I called John Finlater over at the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs. All right, pause it out, and then we got <clears throat> 25 minutes left. But yeah, I quite like that Beatles thing, because in the anthologies, their theory on it was that Elvis was kind of, because he had become kind of older at that point, and the Beatles were the new thing that he was jealous, but I quite like that story that he just said what he knew the president wanted to hear so he could get his hands on a badge. It all, that's almost very um, childlike as well. Like, he just wants that badge, and he's going to do anything he can to get it. But they, yeah. These two as well are probably the best two people that could have... Because, yeah, it's good because you're getting both sides. You're getting Elvis, what it was like to be on Elvis's side and what it was like to be on the president's side. And, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's part two. Yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet. <laughs>